Welcome to the U.S. Virgin Islands. I'm Bill Panoff, and today we'll be diving deep into the culture and history of St. Thomas and St. John, two well-known islands within the U.S. Virgin Islands. But that's not all. We'll be showing you some of the most iconic places to visit. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. St. Thomas was once a bustling trade port and haven for pirates. Now this deep water harbor is one of the busiest ports of call for cruise ships in the Caribbean. If you have traveled through the Caribbean, you have heard of the U.S. Virgin Islands, world-renowned beaches, rich culture and history, and a number of attractions that beg you to come back and explore the island time and time again. We're here at the 99 Steps, one of the most popular landmarks in St. Thomas. These steps were originally built by the Danes in the 18th century. The bricks that these steps are made from actually serve as ballast in some of the first British and Danish ships that sailed to the islands. These stairs lead from Kanansgata up to one of the best lookout points on the island, a 17th century watchtower. Rumor has it this watchtower was Blackbeard's castle in the early 18th century. The colorful flowers and incredible history of 99 Steps definitely makes it worth a visit while exploring St. Thomas. But the biggest secret of all is the 99 Steps are actually 103 steps. Now after that workout, we need something to refuel. Let's check out some local eats. Walking through downtown St. Thomas will definitely stir up an appetite. One of the island's hidden gems, serving up local dishes and so much more. It's called the ice cream shop. But it definitely has more than just ice cream. Pate, minced vegetables and meat rolled in dough and fried to a golden brown. You know, inside the ice cream shop, uh, you know, one would expect to order ice cream, of course. But the real specialty here at the ice cream shop in St. Thomas is pate. And I am about to try the chicken pate. Looks, smells beautiful. Piping hot, just homemade. Let me give it a shot. That is good. That is really, really good. The next time you're in downtown St. Thomas, stop by the ice cream shop. They have pâtés, they have beef, they have chicken, and so much more. And they also have ice cream. You know, art is a big part of the culture here in, uh, in St. Thomas. And we're here at a pop-up gallery. It's really a, a very uh, unusual space with amazing art and unusual offerings. It's 81C, it's located right off of Main Street here. And one of the rising stars in St. Thomas is an artist that has really established herself with an amazing following uh, from articles in St. Thomas Source uh, to being on radio and growing very dramatically. Her name is Priya Bandari, and it's a pleasure to have you here. Hey, Priya, how are you? I'm really good, a pleasure to meet you. Now, you were born here in St. Thomas, is that correct? Yeah, I was born and raised, brought up here, um, went to school here and graduated, and this is my home. But yet you traveled all over the world. You lived in Italy, you lived in Paris, you lived in England, yet the inspiration for your art, which I see, is really right here in St. Thomas, is that right? It is, it always has been. Um, the ocean, as many artists can relate to, is always a really big source of inspiration. The colors of the island, the foliage, and uh, yeah, it's always just been my heart and soul when it comes to my art. Tell us about this beautiful piece behind us. It's called Serenity. Serenity uh, was a painting that I did when uh, I was at school in Boston. I was uh, very homesick when I did it, so I wanted to make a piece that really reminded me of home and made me feel at peace and with love. And so I uh, did this painting and hung it in my room, and it really just brightened my mood every time I saw it, and it really embodies what just being at home in this water and in this environment. How can people find your art apart from the gallery? Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook mostly at uh, prehistoric.art on Instagram and then just prehistoric art on Facebook. I also have an Etsy, which is uh, prehistoric.art at etsy.com, and that's where you can find my stuff. Priya Bhandari, it's a, it's a pleasure interviewing you, and next time you're in St. Thomas on vacation, uh, stop by 81C and stay hello to, to Zach and Priya, and don't miss her showing, and don't miss the art. One of the island's newest excursions is the Tropical Treasure Hunt. It's a scavenger hunt, escape adventure played out as a pirate, or a secret agent adventure. Let's check it out.
Anthony, how are you? I'm doing well, Mr. Pandal. It's a real pleasure to meet you and very excited about the tropical treasure hunt that I've uh, just signed up for. Yeah, I'm excited for you to try it. Uh, we basically take the best of an escape room, but rather be confined to a room. You go to around the island on an immersive adventure that includes augmented reality as oh. well as uh, you know scavenger hunt themes where you have to experience different businesses until you find the buried treasure chest. I'm super excited. Let's go. Can you take me now? Sure. Let's All go. right, let's go. All right, Agent Panoff, I'm Agent Schultz. I'll be Agent your handler Schultz. today. Pleasure. As you know, we have a global crisis we need your help with. Uh, this is going to be your briefcase to help you complete the mission. Okay. Uh, you've got things such as a black light to read various codes. Um, you're actually trying to find a vaccine for a, a global virus. Um, so somewhere at this beach is a buried treasure chest that has the vaccine in it. You're going to need to mix this with some water and put it into the ground system, the groundwater system. Okay. According to what we know, Bagman has hidden several documents in the city which are sick. Good luck. Over and out. found the vaccine. Now that I've got my treasure, I'm ready to check out another island experience. And this one is swimming with adventure. One of the most popular attractions on the island of St. Thomas is Coral World Ocean Park. Coral World Ocean Park hosts everything from swimming with sea lions and dolphins to kayaking with dolphins and shark encounters. Also a dolphin trek program where you can dive underwater with the dolphins. Today, I will be swimming with the dolphins. I can't wait. We are here with Ashley Acreage, the Senior Marine Welfare Specialist. How are you? I'm good, how are you? It's so exciting. Tell me a little bit about your job. What does that mean? So yeah, it's, it's a big title, I tell you. Um, and it comes with everything to do with the animals. So our job is to ensure that they're getting the best husbandry, enrichment, care, everything you can think of. The job just never ends. And so my job and everyone here is to focus on making sure these animals get the best care possible. So Mom, I'm physically gonna get in the water with the dolphins and interact with them, which is really special. I mean, uh, very rarely is that even possible. That's right, yeah, this program's actually very new too. It's been going on for about two years now, and we're still getting acclimated, they're still getting acclimated, and we're just having you join us on that adventure, which is really awesome. Tell me where the dolphins came from. I'm sure they all had different homes, and uh, what is your relationship with these dolphins? So it's actually a great story. Uh, I actually have known these four dolphins, or four of the six that we have, for about five years now, oh, wow. and they came with me from another facility in Scottsdale, Arizona. That facility was closing down, uh -huh. and they needed a new home, and so, we actually all got adopted by Coral World, super awesome. I was on the plane right behind them, wow. touched down right after them. So I've known these dolphins for such a long time. They're really like my best friends. So you had this bond with them. So imagine these dolphins suddenly they saw you, I don't know, a month or a year later, or, you know, in, in St. Thomas. They recognized you immediately. Yes, exactly. So um, as soon as they arrived and I arrived, they knew me right away. Wow. I've been to many dolphin uh, experiences. I've never actually experienced uh, going into the water, but I've never seen such a vast uh, body of water for the dolphins. That's phenomenal. Oh, it's incredible, too. And not just the size of it, but all of the enrichment that they have. We've had, we've had all kinds of things from rays to fish to turtles, you name it. So they're surrounded by enrichment all the time. Sometimes they're more interested in the environment than us, but we don't mind that at all. That's fantastic. So I'm very excited to get into the water. Is there anything I should know before I step uh, in the water with the, the dolphins? Oh yeah, absolutely. So first things first, um, imagine it's like you're walking into somebody's house for the first time. You always wanna go in there respectful. You're gonna take your shoes off at the door, that kind of thing. We're gonna get your water ready in just a minute, get you in a life jacket and water shoes. As you're getting to know them, you wanna shake their hands first before going any further, right? So with our dolphins, it's the same thing. You don't wanna just walk up and start stroking their teeth 
cheek if you've never met them, right? That'd be kind of weird. So with these guys, you're gonna kind of go into it slowly, get to know them a little bit, but once you're in there and you've gotten to know them, we imagine that you get the most intimate experience possible. Will I hear some noises from them? Or do they make a certain noise when they're happy or when they're sad? That's actually a great question. So yeah, they all make different vocalizations and sounds. We can actually capture those sounds, but my favorite ones are the, the ones that they make enthusiastically. So you'll notice sometimes when they get excited or they do something right and they hear the whistle, they'll uh, make a sound or a chirp. You're gonna hear that throughout. But another really cool thing you're gonna hear is their echolocation as well. So they make a really interesting sound when they're echolocating in the water and you're gonna hear that also. It's really, really cool. Can you replicate the sound for us? Oh, geez. Um, I can I can do a couple. Um, so there's a and then they do a raspberry, which is a <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> the second one I can do quite often. That one's a lot easier. About to go down the platform and meet Ashley and to go in the water with the dolphin. All right. So hang tight right here. Nico is anxious to say hello to you. Shake your foot first. Hey, Nico. Oh. <laughs> Very good. What a cutie. Like, I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh, All there right. it is. All right. I love it. Come on in. Plunge. Oh. <laughs> and then I want you to give him a little intimate moment. So make a little boat ramp with your hands, just like this. Okay. I'm going to say, Lico. Go say hi to Bill. Nico. And touch his flippers. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hi. Hey, buddy. Wow, what a dancer. You got more moves than I do. Now, do you want to see him do some jumps? Absolutely. Oh, you're getting wild over here. Good boy. Good boy. While it's definitely an exciting experience, these experiences also help to support marine animal conservation, education, and scientific study. A quick ferry ride from St. Thomas takes you to the next island in the chain of U.S. Virgin Islands. The ferry arrives in Cruise Bay in St. John, and from there, stunning beaches stretch as far as the eye can see. The island itself has a darker history than one would imagine at first glance. The island is speckled with ruins from 18th century plantations, the most famous being the Annenberg Ruins, which was one of the island's largest sugar-producing plantations. By the mid-1700s, there were 109 plantations on the island, from sugarcane to cotton and other crops. One of the less popular historical landmarks on the island, but a very important one nonetheless, is Catherineburg Ruins. We have arrived at the Catherineburg Sugar Mill Ruins. Now these ruins have a deep history dating back all the way to the 18th century. As you can tell by the name, when in operation, there was a sugar and rum plantation. Now, there are no historical plaques throughout the ruins, so let me tell you a little bit about them. Within the ruins, you can see the factory buildings, the windmill tower, and just across the way is a horse mill. What's unique about the ruins on the island is that you can not only explore the outside, but you can also walk inside. According to the World Heritage Encyclopedia, in 1733, one of the first significant slave rebellions in the New World took place in St. John, where African slaves took over the island for six months. During the revolt, the farm here was the headquarters of the Amina warriors. It would be nearly a century later before slave laborers would rise up and force Peter von Schulten to declare a general emancipation to avoid another rebellion. All exports and trades went through Cruise Bay, which is now home to our next stop, Wharfside Village. With no airports on the island, Cruise Bay serves as the social hub of the island. Just a few steps from Cruise Bay is Wharfside Village, a shopper's paradise, contrived of boutiques and seaside cafes with courtyards speckled throughout. Everybody knows that I'm a fan of handcrafted jewelry, especially pieces that reflect the islands we visit. Today, we're gonna to meet the designer and the artistic mind behind Bamboo Studios, right here in St. John. Let's go in. 
We are here inside Bamboo Studios here in beautiful St. John, this gorgeous jewelry store. And we're here with the lead designer and the brainchild behind the wonderful jewelry, Jess Berry. Jess, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? Wonderful. The, the jewelry is so unique and iconic here. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind the jewelry. St. John is completely the inspiration. We try to keep that like simple but like elegant island feel that you see. Um, a lot of our pieces are, are designed by just the nature of the island itself. Yeah. And we were in the workshop earlier, and we actually saw you creating jewelry, you and your colleagues. It was uh, phenomenal. What were you working on? Uh, I was actually making a few of our smaller Petro pieces. Uh, the Petro, it's the petroglyph that's found on the Reef Bay hiking trail. It's, sim it's considered the symbol of St. John. Um, it's only found here on St. John, carved into rocks. It was left by the Teano Indians. Oh, wow. Yeah, very, very yeah. interesting. It yeah. was amazing to see you actually having the workshop so close to the, to the store. It's uh, very convenient. Oh, yeah. It's super convenient. It's really fun for the customers to be able to walk in and see the jewelry being made. That's very rare with any jewelry store. In walking through the store, I noticed all the beautiful jewelry, obviously, but I noticed the piece that uh, was named after the hurricanes, Irma and Maria. What was the, the inspiration behind making a piece like that? Well, we wanted something that just showed that we were strong. After the hurricane, we weren't going to let it put us down, so we needed something that would go with our designs that we have here, keeping that simple but elegant look. So we've got the Irma Maria. It's a really strong, solid piece. It features two hurricanes going opposite direction with five wraps on each side. That symbolizes the two Category 5s that hit us hard. We're back, and we're back stronger. How did you, how did you wind up in St. John? Um, I went to jewelry school in Paris, Texas and worked for a little while in Dallas, um, actually just posting a fit picture on Facebook, a ring that I made, somebody that knew somebody, cool connection, I just got a job offer, bought a plane ticket and came down here. <laughs> and you've been here ever since? Yeah, yeah, that was in 2015. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Jess Berry, it's a pleasure meeting you and uh, if you are in St. John's or the USVI, uh, Bamboo Studios is a must. It's a very unusual uh, studio with unique pieces, and you'll have a chance to meet Jess and the other colleagues here. Now I'm ready to go to the beach. A visit to the USVI is not complete without a visit to one of the most stunning beaches, Trunk Bay. Today we find ourselves at Trunk Bay in St. John, a favorite among cruisers and travelers alike, consistently remarked as one of the world's top beaches. Trunk Bay Beach is within the boundaries of the Virgin Islands National Park and is actually named after one of the island's notable visitors, the leatherback turtle. And yes, the locals call them trunks. Here you've got standard beach amenities like restrooms, snack bars, and equipment rental. But my favorite part is the underwater trail. The underwater trail takes snorkelers throughout the coral reef, and St. John has some of the best shallow water snorkeling in the Virgin Islands. So who's coming with me snorkeling? Thank you. It's been a long day of touring here in St. John's, and what better way to unwind and relax with a beautiful drink actually called the Flight Changer from a beautiful bar here in uh, St. John called Drinks. Why do they call it the Flight Changer? Because after you drink this, you want to prolong your flight and remain in St. John or St. Thomas. It's been an absolutely beautiful trip. I encourage you all to visit. This is the place to be, St. John, St. Thomas, the U.S. Virgin Islands. I'm Bill Panoff. Thanks for tuning in and look forward to our future episodes. Happy cruising. Happy cruising.